Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey, Facebook, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Morning Motivation with Big Papa. Wednesday morning, baby. Wonderful Wednesday. You know what that means? That means Big Papa's going three days in a row now at the gym. So I have been writing in my goals. So at first I started my goals that I was going to do four days a week. And then I started adding I was going to do a fifth day. So I'm going to do five days. So you know what I'm doing? Usually Wednesday is my my take a break and rest day. Nope, I'm adding in. I'm adding in a Wednesday, baby. So marking another goal off. Now I just got to make it consistent. Hope you guys are doing great this morning. Hey, Sharon, nearly afternoon. Where were you at, Sharon, for it to be nearly afternoon? You in Australia? You in uh, you're in the UK? You might. Where are you at? Um, so I hope everyone's doing fantastic. So I had this thought about it's so it's so interesting how how the things that we that we deal with in parenting that I deal with, you know, as someone who specializes in parenting, how how they mimic, you know, other areas of our life um of our lives. Oh, did you guys hear about the young the restless guy the other day? Um, I think they said, did he commit suicide? Christoph, Christoph St. John or something like that. I can't remember, but he used to, he used to play Nathan on uh, Young the Restless. I used to watch that show back in the day when I was in high school, um, during the summer. So I'd be, I was a, I was a soap opera fiend, Young the Restless, Days of Our Lives, The Bold and the Beautiful. Um, but yeah, apparently some years ago, his, uh, 20 something year old son went to a residential facility for, I'm assuming depression or something and ended up killing himself in the facility. Um, this is, you know, I don't, I don't read a lot of news guys. So my, my facts aren't always accurate. And honestly, I don't really even care. I'm just giving you the general just an overview. I'm not making any off the wall claims or anything. You can research it for yourself if you're that interested, but it, it's interesting to me, but just in general. Um, so apparently after that, he, he really struggled and then he was suicidal once before. And then I guess he just, he, uh, just succeeded and he was only 52 years old and that's just really sad. And, but then it just, you know, it really, makes the public like stand up and take, take note of, you know, emotional challenges and mental challenges are a real thing and people really struggle and they really feel like they're in dark places and don't know where else to turn. And we have all this inside the parenting matrix conditioning which is, you know, tell, telling people to suck it up and telling people to get over it and telling them it's the past. And, you know, that's not helpful. That's not honoring anyone. That's, that's not being present to them. That's not listening to them. It's not understanding. It's not helping them go more into their, their pain. I mean, you know, if someone's showing up in your life that's depressed and they're sad, um, if you don't have time to sit and be witness to them, then help them find someone who can, because they're, if they're sharing with you, they're sharing for a reason. And it's okay. If you're not that person who can, who can be in that place, that's, you know, there's no judgment there, but help them find someone who can, who can be there, who can be there for them. And hi, Carolina, Carolina, who can be there for them and, and uh, witness to them don't just pull them off and don't just tell them, you know, it's going to be, this too shall pass. That's some bullshit. When that, when someone's struggling like that, it's not a matter of this too shall pass because in that moment they think this is forever. 
And that's why they end up doing things like killing themselves because they really do think this is, this is forever. Um, so I don't know how I got onto that. Oh, I, I don't know. It just popped in my head. I guess it's, I just found it was interesting because it's someone I used to, I used to follow all the time. Um, so what I was saying about the, the, um, there's a word for it, the way, the way parenting kind of mimics some of the other things that we experience in life. It's just like, you know, going to work out when you are struggling, when you are struggling, maybe that's what came up with the guy, Nathan, when you're struggling in life, when you're in, a, when you're in a tough place, when you're with your kids and your kids are just like, so I'm going through this process right now with a group of parents. It's, it's called inside the parenting matrix. And basically we're just, we're going through a, this 28 day, it's going to be 30 day process every day. You know, this new lesson, this new teaching, this new video, trying to help them see the way society has conditioned us to see things and how it just creates more stress and more overwhelm. And then, you know, helping them to, to break out of that transcendent is what I call it, transcending the matrix and, and pulling the wool off of our eyes and seeing things different. And one of those things that we do inside the matrix is when we're struggling with our children or in life or in any situation, we, um, we get overwhelmed by it and we get so stressed out and we get so, so depressed and so resentful and so angry. And all, you know, we have all these feelings and these emotions and emo you know, there's only two primary emotions, love and fear. And we have this emotion of fear that, that just overwhelms us. And we feel like this is it. It's always going to be this way. And the matrix has you conditioned to believe that because in that place of conditioning, you do all of these traditional matrix things like get medication and, and uh, commit suicide and give up on your, on your children and you stop doing, you know, you stop doing the things you usually do or you eat a bunch of crappy food and you, you know, you drink a bunch of alcohol and you smoke a lot of dope and, and you, you, you sleep more and you, you know, you work more. So we do all these addictive, we call them addictive things, but what they really are is they are, they're matrix reactions. They are matrix reactions to stress and to pain. And when, and, and so the problem is, is we get overwhelmed and we get more mired into, into the stress and to the challenges. And then we do, so this is what fear does. Fear causes you to do more of the very thing that is that is already existing in your life so so stress stress and fear are are interchangeable and when you become when you become afraid when you become just like when you become stressed you actually do more things to cause you more stress and you do less of the things that pull you out of the stress and so it's like you worry more, you stress more, you eat worse, you work out less, you, you isolate more, you sleep more, you, you know, it's like you do all of these things that work against you. And then it becomes conditioned. And before you know it, you know, one bad week leads into a bad month. And then and then now you're into a bad year and now you've gained 40 or 50 pounds and it seems overwhelming and you go to the gym, but the conditioning is so overwhelming that you, that you just can't sustain until finally you realize something and what you realize, and this is the whole point of what I'm, what I'm sharing with you this morning is that your biggest breakthrough, your biggest opportunity of growth the door, the door to your freedom, the door to your success, the door to your happiness is right in front of you. It is your pain. It is the place in where you, it is the place where you are currently struggling. The door to your peace is your depression. Let me say that again. The door to your peace is your depression. How does that make sense? It's because when we are depressed, 
We don't go deeper into our depression. We try to do all these things to get out of it. When you are struggling, you don't go deeper into the struggle. You do all these things to try to get out of the struggle. When in reality, when you are in a place of pain, the best thing you can do is to sit with that pain and go deeper into that pain and get underneath it and get to the root of it. The depression is just a symptom for the stress and fear underneath it, for the trauma that you've experienced at some other point in your life, the anxiety, the weight gain, the migraines, the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol. Those are just symptoms for the pain, for the pain that you've experienced before that you haven't dealt with. So go into it, go deeper into it and and look, open that door, throw that door wide open and look at what that pain is. So I had a a parent I was doing some coaching with yesterday inside the matrix program. And she went all the way back to when she was four years old, four years old and uncovered this anxiety that has been ruling her life, absolutely ruling her life. And we just worked with it, just right there. We just worked with it. And I'm on the phone, just working with her right there. And she felt freer. I followed up with her that evening. She felt freer. She felt lighter. And so I gave her some, some, some tips, some tools, some techniques. First, the, the understanding is what's the most important, but then gave her some specific activities to do when she's feeling that way. And what I shared with her, you know, most people would think, oh, that's really strange. But it's really to stand in the stand in a, in a place where she's, uh, you know, where she can have some privacy and run in place as fast as she can and scream and cry and let it out because it's anxiety. And what the anxiety does is it holds her hostage. And, and, uh, she's always wanted to try to run away and she's felt hostage. Like she was, was trapped and it went all the way back to when she was a little girl and she she had a lot of sadness about that. And so we were just uncovering, uncovering those little trauma, those traumas that, that just fester in your life. They're just root. They're just rooted in your life and in your story. And then eventually they become symptoms. They grow into a tree and become leaves and symptoms. And so rather than seeing this suffering that you're going through right now as this, this never ending story, see it as this huge opportunity this possibility for you to break through to the next phase, to this de- next dimension of where you want to be. It, it, there's something you're asking for from life. You've been asking for something from life. I'm going to leave this with you. You've been asking for something from life and life is showing up and it's giving you something that you think is the complete opposite of what you've been asking for, but it's not. Life is giving you what you're dealing with right now because of what you've been asking for. What you've been asking for is just on the other side of this thing that life has given you. But life is saying, hey, you got to get through this. You got to get through this to get to that. And so get through this, dig into it, go deep into it. Challenge it, confront it. And you'll be amazed at where it brings you out to. So don't see this as the end. See this as the beginning. See this as an opportunity. See this as an as an opening. Sorry the video is glitchy. I'm driving and, you know, blame it on Sprint, Corey. <laughs> blame it on Sprint. All right, guys. Big Papa loves you. God bless you. Have a wonderful Wednesday, and I'll see you in the morning. Before-